Pop quiz. What's the fastest way to make an old and tried fantasy race fresh, hot, and happening? That's right, add wings. Which brings us to the topic of today's video, the Indux, a race of flappy minotaurs whose only appearance was in a cancelled book that fortunately was released to the internet thanks to the efforts of its writers. These flappy bullmen have a long and tragic past filled with betrayal, hardship, and hope. They are as far as you can get from the known world physically, but their story makes them worth visiting. Welcome to Mistara. I'm Mr. Welch, and this is what it sounds like when bulls fly. The Indux were hinted at in Red Steel and finally appeared in the Savage Coast's Orc's Head Peninsula Guide, which was only ever released online as part of the Odyssey series. You can get it at the vaults for free. They live far up in the Ishu Plateau of the Arm of the Immortals, the mountainous peninsula on the western edge of Brun, like we have any other kind of peninsula in Mastara. They stand apart from different races as they were seemingly created by a greater Shidu, a powerful celestial who was permitted to remain in Mastara permanently. Naturally, there's more to that story. Physically, Induk stands six to seven feet tall at minimum, and being minotaurs get a bonus to strength, though they aren't the most agile creatures. Under no circumstances do you want to take one of these guys into a china shop. What, with the wings and all? Their horns stick out from the side of their head instead of curling forward like some cows, and both sexes sport them. They're built like bodybuilders. Baby Induks are born with six-pack abs. Induks taller than seven foot tall aren't uncommon, and these count as large creatures. They can be any color commonly found on a cow, though white Induks are thought to be blessed by the immortals and pressured into joining the Order of Ishu, their knightly order. They are a playable race for second edition, though there's problems with the way it's been scented, and you'll need to redo them for Beckme or other editions. Induks are a very religious people, and they are quite moral, typically of lawful good alignment. They embody the phrase, good is not nice, as while they don't go looking for trouble, they will deal with it if found. They have a large number of clerics and naturally excel at the fine art of hurting people. The Indukes don't have a lot of wizards in their numbers, but they can use arcane magic without problems. This is not a popular profession in their culture, though. They can fly in light armor and, by some strange quirk, bronze plate mail. But they have a high natural armor class anyway, so they prefer bronze armor or leather. In battle, they fight with one-handed weapons. Larger weapons interfere with their wings. They have a preference for blunt weapons. Their horns do a small amount of damage, and until you add in their strength bonus, they can use any ranged weapon but prefer the crossbow because they can use it while flying. Their gear selection is based on how easy it is to use aloft. And while the image of a winged minotaur swinging a great axe is awesome, it's a bit hard to do with a 14-foot wingspan. Obviously, the wings are the first thing you notice about an Induk. They can fold their wings back, but they can't completely hide them. You're not disguising the fact you've got a flying minotaur just by giving him a trench coat. Their armor has to be specially made due to the wings if they're bothering to wear armor. Their height is pretty tough and protects as well as most medium armors, so a lot of them go without. The Indux can fly at a pretty good clip, but they can only do it for 30 minutes before they have to stop and rest. They can reach up to 10,000 feet in altitude before they can't climb any higher. The wings are feathered and quite flammable. Indux are afraid of open flame for this reason. If an Induk takes fire damage and fails a saving throw, the feathers will burn, and it takes about a month before they grow back enough for the Minotaur to be able to fly again. While they are capable of flight at will, they walk as much as they fly. The reason is simple. They're not the most graceful flyers. They can try to hover over the battlefield with crossbows, but they will miss more than they will hit. They're not the best shots. Or as an alternative, they can land and start beating on people with their mace. While they aren't great with a crossbow, you can't say the same thing about their proficiency with a footsman's mace. The history of the Unduk people is a long and troubled one, as their kind nature was used against them in an act of betrayal that helped spark one part of the Red Curse. The trouble, as always, starts with the Nithians. Bet you didn't see that coming. The Induks originated in the nation of Namur, where they lived peacefully, existing as simple farmers, priests, and builders. Despite being bovine-adjacent humanoids, they were rather good engineers. They made towering cities of stones that dominated the landscape. Their one problem was the Orcs of the Dark Jungle, who outnumbered them by a significant amount. The Induks could hold the Orcs at bay, but they couldn't sustain a long war, they just didn't have the numbers. Enter the Man Scorpions, who were fresh from getting their minds wiped with the disappearance of the Nithians. Initially, they were meant to be shock troops created for battle. Now they believe they were migrating to escape some long-forgotten catastrophe from a long-forgotten nation where they served their long-forgotten masters. Noticing a pattern here? The Man Scorpions were rather approachable and friendly, fresh off their shock amnesia, and were more than happy to help the Induk fight the Orcs in return for a place to live. The Minotaurs had no use for buildings built low to the ground, so the two races agreed. The Induks rented out their basements, and the Man Scorpions slaughtered the Orcs. For a while, everything was happy land, and the two races complemented each other. The Induks found ready students for their clerics. The Man Scorpions had no written language and were thrilled to learn how to spell their names. Well, they did have a written language, but somehow they forgot it. Because Nithians. The Man Scorpions converted to the Induks' religion, worshipping the immortal Idu, an aspect of Ixion. 
Together, the two races thrived for years, until somebody had to mess things up. Enter the immortal patron of the dick move, that's Antiodal. Under the guise of an immortal called Menlil, the patron of corruption started whispering into the ears of the Manscorpions that would listen. The Indukes were keeping their wards as nothing more than slaves. The Manscorpions tilled the fields. The Indukes lived a life of luxury, relying on others to do all the hard work for them. The Indukes were hoarding wealth while Manscorpions had to rely on the scraps fed to them. This philosophy spread like wildfire among the population. All the while, the Indukes were unaware of the treachery about to engulf them. They were a little too trusting. They had been surrounded by obvious friends like the ER or apparent enemies in the Orcs. They had never been betrayed. Until now. At first, the clerics of Minlil targeted individuals, capturing different Induk leaders, selling them to the Erinia of Harath as slaves. This raised funds for the traders to arm themselves. Then they spread their poisonous message among their own kind, turning them on their former allies. The Manscorpions rose up almost as one to wipe out their former benefactors. They outnumbered the Minotaurs even more than the Orcs did, and they had the advantage of living in the cities they were trying to conquer. The Indukes prayed for salvation and were rewarded with Ixion, cursing the Manscorpions to forever burn with the touch of the sun. This proved deadly as the Induk had built numerous devices they could channel sun rays and redirect them, originally for religious ceremonies. But they weaponized them to vaporize massive chunks of the Manscorpions' armies, like ants under a magnifying glass. But the size of the Manscorpions' forces was too much. One city after another fell to the attackers, and the Induks retreated further and further until they reached just their capital. They prepared to fight to the last when the ER, the winged elves, convinced them that it was the best if they fled and regrouped rather than face extinction. Reluctantly, the Minotaurs flew off, leaving the nation of Nemur to the Manscorpions. They did leave all the solar ray machines on, which would randomly activate and fry Manscorpions. It wasn't much, but it was a final insult for their conquerors. Especially since they took the keys with them. The Indux were also responsible for creating the regular Minotaurs, though this happened centuries before the fall of Nemur. According to their lore, the Indux were created by a greater Shidu, a celestial that served the immortal Aidu. This wasn't true. The Shidu, named Gildish, was loyal to Ixion and served him well, because he was a creation of Ixion. As a reward for his service, Ixion made the Indux in Gildesh's image and appointed his herald as their first king. But some grew jealous of the Shidu's power, and one Induk named Miniotis decided to steal a religious artifact and shanked poor Gildesh in the flank. Ixion took a dim view of this and cursed Miniotis and his followers by causing their wings to fall off and then chased them out of the Induk country. Thus, the normal Minotaurs were born and the Indukes have a ingrained hatred of them ever since. The Indukes fled west from Nemur, settling on a plateau over the Gildesh Pass. The new nation of Ishu was founded, and it was nowhere near as grand as their former home of Nemur. The land is fertile, which is good, as the surviving population is barely over 11,000. Indukes still have a large appetite. Their lone city of Sardon isn't the grand capital like they had in Nemur. There is no large multi-story buildings, only two large buildings, and those are the Temple to Aidu and their capital. The king is Gildesh II, who is the resurrected form of the original king, though they don't know this. Ixion has decided that every time Gildesh snuffs it, he gets to spend some time playing Aaron Boy in the afterlife for the patron of the sun, before getting sent back to Mastar to sort things out there. The reason for the lack of large buildings for a flying race is twofold. First, they're still humiliated after their defeat. Second, they don't have a lot of numbers left, and building tall structures requires a workforce that just isn't there. The goal of the Induk is to retake their homeland. That's their driving goal. That's their only focus. They don't have the numbers, but they do have clerical magic and numerous allies, and they don't explode in sunlight. They also have an understanding of engineering that would help them build the war machines and similar needed to take their homeland back. While they're not on par with gnomes, they're still centuries ahead of the man scorpion's abilities. By a strange coincidence, they have an accidental ally with their former foes, the orcs of the dark jungle. It's not a formal alliance, they would attack each other on sight, but the orcs have returned to their old ways and have started attacking Nemur again. The tenants have changed, but the orcs don't care. The Indux will wait for the orcs to hit one of the Nemorian cities, and once the attack is ended, the Minotaurs and the Flying Elves attack it once more while the Manscorpions are trying to recoup. Their plan worked rather well as they retook the city of Imshedu. They fortified it using their engineering skills and repelled several Manscorpion counterattacks. The Minotaurs are wiser this time, and less prone to treachery. The Indux are a fascinating race, if an obscure one. If you have a party that looks like the cantina scene from Star Wars, they feel right at home. As far as obscure races go, they aren't bad ones. Lawful good in nature, they can fly, but they prefer to fight on the ground. They're more likely to be clerics and fighters than spell snipers. Their size can be a problem. It's not just that they're large, but they're also wide because of the wings. You don't want to be dungeon crawling with these guys. They have to walk through most doors sideways. For role-playing purposes, they're a fantastic addition to the game. 
The party runs into flying minotaurs, only to discover they're the good guys. Granted, they've also got serious trust issues because of all the people stabbing them in the back, but if you can prove that you're loyal to one of them, you've got a friend for life. If you betray them, they will show you how much falling damage you take after plummeting from 10,000 feet. And you had better believe they are aiming for the picket fence at the bottom. That's the Indux, a race that a lot of you have been asking for for a long time, and I finally got to it on my list. Now it's time to head over to the neighbors for next week's video and look at the ER, the Flying Elves of Mastara. This video was supposed to be out last week, but the remaster took a lot longer than I expected because of all the extra research. So I'm trying to play catch up now. And you still have to deal with all the continuity problems that the Red Steel books are plagued with. And this one had a lot of formatting issues because that's what was wrong with the Odyssey line. Granted, that's because they never got a proper editor because TSR killed Mastara. And we're lucky to get what we did, so I can't complain. So until next week, moo y'all. Just moo.